As has been noted by thousands and thousands of stories, venture capital and much of Silicon Valley is built on lies and hope. Sometimes those lies and hope turn into something much darker. They turn into outright fraud and theft. And it is impossible to describe corporate fraud, theft, and lies without discussing Theranos and Elizabeth Holmes, perhaps the greatest corporate crime of the past decade. Holmes, once a Silicon Valley darling, was proven to be one of the greatest frauds in American history. Holmes defrauded governments, militaries, business leaders, and more. In the end, Holmes was convicted of multiple felonies, sentenced to over a decade in jail, and thrown out of the company she founded. Here's the thing, and maybe the most ironic thing, it could have been avoided. In March 2008, the corporate board of Theranos was ready to fire Holmes after being presented with information that indicated Holmes's deceit over projected revenue. However, Holmes wormed her way out of the firing. Ironically, had she been fired, it wouldn't have just been the best thing for the company, it probably would have been the best thing for her. Let's start at the top. Holmes was a child of an Enron vice president, irony, and a congressional staffer. She had a privileged upbringing and attended private schools where she learned about biology and technology. Like many people, Holmes hated blood and hated needles. She hated it so much that she sought to create a product that could allow for dozens of blood tests to be run with just a few droplets of blood, thereby negating the need for larger blood draws and saving time, money, and extensive patient discomfort. The medical need for this is obvious. Performing tests requires the use of blood, and performing more tests requires more blood. Holmes proposed to, in her words, democratize healthcare by creating machinery that would allow her to perform dozens of blood tests with just a few droplets of blood. Undeterred by professional warnings that her idea was impossible, Holmes dropped out of Stanford and founded Theranos in 2003. Using her family connections, she raised millions and plowed that money into her company. By the end of the decade, Holmes would raise $92 million in venture capital. In 2007, Theranos and Holmes produced the Edison, named after the great American inventor. The Edison was a big blocky device that would supposedly take blood and provide results on a wide array of tests. According to Theranos' old website, the Edison would perform immunoassays, which would look for specific chemical markers in blood. Here's the thing, Holmes lied a lot. And the Edison never worked. Theranos' history is replete with Holmes lying to investors. Blood tests she claimed were being done by the Edison were actually being done by standard commercially available blood testing machines. In short, the Edison was a complete fabrication. Engineers who pointed out these issues were regularly fired, and this is the culture that ultimately led whistleblowers to report Holmes. There's a lesser known story from Holmes' time as CEO of Theranos. And if the story had ended differently, billions of investor dollars could have been saved. And Holmes may not be heading to jail today. This story was first reported in Bad Blood, Secrets and Lies in a Silicon Valley Startup by John Carreyrou, the Wall Street Journal reporter who ultimately exposed Holmes' lies. This story is a fascinating example, one of many, about how Holmes was able to get her corporate board to bend to her will. Here's a background as laid out by Bad Blood. It's March 2008. At that time, Holmes had raised millions and recruited a board of numerous business experts. It's important to remember how venture capital works. A founder makes a pitch of future success based on, among other things, revenue projections. Much of Holmes's venture capital was raised on revenue projections that were, shall we say, as real as the tooth fairy. The revenue projections came from what would happen if Holmes was able to land a contract with a major hospital, healthcare lab, or drug chain. The challenge, Holmes needed the Edison to pass a validation study first, and that wasn't happening at all. In fact, quite the opposite. The Edison was failing in test after test after test. With this background, staff members were concerned, then suspicious. Todd Surdy, the head of sales and marketing at the time, was one of those employees. He was looking at revenue projections and was deeply concerned that they weren't based in reality, given that he had never seen validation data that showed that the Edison was working. Surdy took his concerns to Michael Esquivel, the company's attorney. Esquivel also had fears. Their concerns were large enough that both Surdy and Esquivel approached Tom Brodeen, a board member at Theranos, with their fears. Brodeen advised that the two bring their concerns to Don Lucas, the head of the board at the time. The concerns were massive, and enough to spurn Lucas to call an emergency meeting of the rest of the then small board. At that meeting, 
It was agreed. Holmes wasn't ready for primetime. She would be removed as CEO, and Brodine would temporarily take her place. To quote Carrie Rue, but then something extraordinary happened. Over the course of the next two hours, Elizabeth convinced them to change their minds. Holm pledged to change and improve her work ethic, enact stricter protocols, and be more transparent. She convinced the board to let her stay in office. And then immediately after the meeting, she fired Sardi and Esquivel, so there's that, but anyway. If Holmes had been removed, what could have been avoided? Well, quite a bit. As you know by now, Holmes had already defrauded investors by giving false information about the success of the Edison, and she used that fake information to raise money. In 2012, Holmes and Theranos partnered with Safeway. The grocery store giant invested $300 million into renovating 800 clinics with Theranos devices that were meant to provide blood test results. In 2013, a similar deal was cut with 40 Walgreens locations. In 2015, a partnership was created with the Cleveland Clinic, AmeriHealth Caritas, and Capital Blue Cross. All of these deals were based on falsified test results and fake promises. That meant that the $724 million that Theranos raised from investors was based on a lie. That money went to the company for normal business operations, but there was no question that Holmes enriched herself as well. In 2015, before the Carrie Roo story broke, Holmes owned half the stock in the company, and her net worth was an estimated $4.5 billion, making her one of the richest women in the world. In October 2015, Carrie Roo published the first in a series of damning stories that detailed the fraud that the company had used to succeed. Holmes tried to deny the story's accuracy, but the damage was unquestionably done. Multiple lawsuits followed, and the company eventually went under. Holmes and the chief operating officer of the company, Ramesh Sunny Balwani, who Holmes was romantically involved with, were charged with a series of crimes. Holmes was charged with nine counts of wire fraud and two counts of conspiracy to commit wire fraud. Holmes was ultimately convicted on three counts of wire fraud and one count of conspiracy. In November 2022, Holmes was sentenced to 135 months or 11 and one quarter years in jail. Holmes bought tickets to Mexico during the time of the trial. She and her boyfriend said it was in the event that she was found not guilty, not because she was trying to flee the country or anything. Sure, Jan. In other words, had the board fired Holmes in 2008, they could have stopped the Theranos scam before it went further. The board included former Secretary of State Henry Kissinger, former Secretary of Defense William Perry, future Defense Secretary Jim Mathis, and many, many more. The board may have been star-studded, but they clearly dropped the ball and let Holmes fool them. This ultimately sullied the reputation of the entire board, with John Carreyrou calling it one of the most massive failures in corporate governance history. Among other things, the board was criticized, rightly, for not providing enough oversight, for failing to enact appropriate financial controls, and ultimately for falling under Holmes' spell. It's important to remember that the role of a corporate board is to provide financial oversight and manage a company's strategic vision in addition to supervising the CEO. According to all reports, the board, many of whom were investors themselves or related to investors in the company, failed to do just that, never asking Holmes tough questions and never digging deep enough into the Edison or the company's books to see what was really happening. Ironically, they also created a pathway that would eventually land Holmes in a jail sentence. Had Holmes been fired in 2008, odds are good that she would still be a free woman today, not facing down more than a decade in prison. And that is it for this edition of Almost Something. Please like and comment below, but as always, the most important thing you can do is hit that subscribe button. We will continue to churn out more Almost content in business and history, and I do hope you enjoyed it. Have a wonderful day out there, my friends, and as always, don't let there be any Almost in your life. Take care, everybody.